Th thank you very much. Um, so I, I asked my nine-year-old son yesterday what I should talk about today, and he, and he gave me a little bit of a funny look. He's like, why are you asking me? And then the sparkle in his eye is like, well, tell them about Minecraft. It's really fun. Like, so I, I had to mention it. Minecraft is a really fun game. Uh, it's great for kids, too. Um, but this is the first sort of technology thing that I've been able to ever talk in Iowa at. And I wanted to, I wanted to talk about my experience in Iowa growing up and living here sort of caught between deep technology and sort of small town rural Iowa. Uh, sort of, it feels like I'm living two lives sometimes. Um, so the, in going through, I, I wanna give the background of sort of my life, give you guys some context. And this is, this is where I grew up. Um, this is my dad's farm. Uh, it's over by, on the eastern side of Iowa, near Dubuque, a small town called Cascade. And growing up on the farm, I was the oldest of seven, and there's, there's a lot of cool technology, a lot of stuff going on at the farm. It's always very active. You can get into a lot of trouble. Uh, one of the things I was drawn to very early on was all of the, how machines worked and how the, the technology worked and how taking things apart and breaking things sometimes, uh, much to my dad's frustration. Um, not so much into the labor and all the, the other busy work and the, the actual farming. Uh, so in, in school, when I first met computers, I was completely drawn to them. I was always curious about how things work, and computers completely sucked me in right away. Through, I, I had big plans, like through junior high and high school, of wanting to go to college, wanting to, I really wanted to build like smart toys, toys that could communicate with each other using this as electronics. You know, we, I had a Game Boy, one of the very first Game Boys, and it couldn't talk to any other Game Boy. Yet at the farm, we had CB radios and machines, and they, you know, they could talk to each other. Why couldn't these things happen? Why couldn't these things be more fun? Um, so what, later on in high school, uh, right out of high school, life sort of changes for you, right? You don't always get control over everything. Um, my wife of 16 years now and I ended up having a child, very unplanned, but a wonderful event. And I had to make a choice very early on between a career in technology, getting out in the world, and the raising a child and starting a family. Um, part of the, the most important part of my life growing up in Iowa was the community values, was the fact that I have 70 cousins, many of which still live in the area, because both of my parents come from big families as well. That was so important, and th those family values are so important, I absolutely placed those above my own career goals, the technology itself. And so I was working various technology jobs as much as I could in the Eastern Iowa area, in the Dubuque area, still very involved in the internet, because the internet lets you, you know, throughout the 90s, it, it was more and more so, you could really be anywhere on, in, in the world using the technology, getting into the BBSs, and learned a lot about protocols, and HTTP, and XML, and DNS. Um, just sort of fascinated by how these things are enabling people to communicate all over the world. In the late 90s, I saw the rise of instant messaging, and I saw that it was sort of this proprietary thing happening within companies um, that they were using to let people communicate. It wasn't open like the rest of the internet. It wasn't, didn't have those values that I was actually raised with about being open and transparent and communicating with everybody. Uh, so I used you know, the technologies that I saw rising at the time, XML, like let's try and solve this. I started Jabber. Uh, Jabber took off. It was, it was an incredible project. It was an incredible community formed around it. Numerous companies started up. Um, to this day, it's, it's baked into everything. And I, I'm very proud that this is an Iowa originating technology that is probably in all of your phones. Uh, it, the military is using it all over the place. Um, it might even be controlling the HVAC system in this building. So it, it's baked into everything. A, a lot of times when you're instant messaging with people, it's actually going over Jabber behind the scenes. Um, so it's, it's under the hood, it's changed the lives of so many people around the world and it's let them communicate. And through that experience, through sort of um, having to live here in Iowa, raise a family in Iowa, never varying from that commitment, and travel a lot out of the world, meeting lots of companies, meeting lots of other startups, um, I did a lot of contracting. I did a lot of uh, sort of various different roles, architect and engineering, um, problem solving, uh, scaling, operations. Um, and over the course of the last 10 to 15 years, as all that's been developing, 
Uh, one of the, the, the most important event was in 2010. One of the startups I was working with was not going so well. Another startup very similar was also not going so well. And the founder of that startup um, called me up. He's like, hey, I really want to meet with you. I want to figure out what's going on here. We, we, we've built some cool stuff, but it's not working right. Uh, it's, and, but I'm really excited about this. And I'm like, well, I'm in Iowa. So, and he was in New York. And he's, he's like, well, actually, I'm traveling back to San Francisco. I'll just stop out and see you. Nobody's ever done that before. I'm like, all right, yeah, if you want to come on and see me in Iowa, let's talk. So he showed up uh, in Dubuque. We went, and get a co went to get a coffee. Uh, it was a really good discussion, and it turns out he, his family has a, a deep history in baseball. He's played a lot of baseball, and uh, he didn't know that the Field of Dreams was right next door. He knew it was in Iowa, so we went out to the Field of Dreams, you know, 20 minutes away, um, and it was, you know, it was such an awakening experience for him because it was such a baseball, is such a strong part of his history, and the problems we were both facing at that time, and we really both opened up on the field there, talking about. What if we could do anything? What is, what is the most important thing? What are we most excited about? Um, the discussion started, we, we both cared a lot about all of these apps that we're, we're using, all of the social data. It started to feel a little bit like these silos, like these instant messaging silos that happened a long time ago. The, a lot, we're sharing so much of our lives through these different apps. Um, and I think it's wonderful that that's happening. Like, I'm really excited about that but I believe there's so much more potential there, that it's just the start of something, and, and he felt the same way. Um, I didn't think there was a good business model in there, and, and he had some really good ideas, so we're like, all right, let's try this. You know, let's see where this goes. Started talking to some investors. We got connected with another co-founder uh, who was working at a similar startup, doing, building similar things, going through similar struggles. Um, we raised a seed round early 2011, and uh, we, we set down this path like we, we called the Locker Project. We wanted to build this stack of software that lets you bring all of this data that you're sharing, all these things you're communicating into one place so that other people can build applications with your data, with your stuff. And we were very motivated by it. We grew the team. Uh, it was like any startup. There was a lot of very difficult times through 2011. Trying to, trying to figure out, did this fit? Were people interested in it? How do we build these pieces? Um, we got to early 2012. We had something released. We had people playing with it, and it didn't have that spark. You know, it was something we were so passionate about, and it wasn't quite right. It wasn't there. But the, we were, I started asking everybody using it, what did they care about? They were all application developers. There were people trying to build great experiences for people, combining all of this data, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. So instead of it being like a person using this piece of software to bring everything in, we turned it into an API. We started going to these developers saying, we want to help you build great experiences, build social experiences to be able to communicate. And that's what brought us to today. Through, throughout this last year, we've been, uh, these last few months especially, we've got it open, we've got the API up, we have lots of applications being developed on it, and uh, it, it's, it's going incredibly well. I'm so proud of the functionality we've been able to do and provide. And in sharing all this context, um, I kind of, I, I kind of want to go meta a little bit. I, I want to go, like, here's, here's my, all of the different things that I'm sharing, right? You can, I've shared the context of my history and my life so far. You can actually connect with me on any of these and you can see my future happen. Every single one of the, you in the audience can see and participate in my life, become part of the fabric of the life that I've come from and the life that I'm creating out into the future. And technology is enabling that. But the technology that's enabling that, I think of this as sort of like a new language that we're able to share our lives with each other. This language that we're, uh, that we're using is, is almost childlike right now. Like the verbs that you get is like to be able to share and to comment and to post and to like. Uh, the nouns that you get is just photos and places. And these, these are very primitive language elements that more and more applications are bringing more and more pieces of that language together. And we're starting, and more, the more powerful our phones are becoming and the devices that are close to us, they can take the context of where we are. They can help create this new language. Every new application is making a person more able to share and connect and communicate their life with somebody else in real time as well as historically to bring all that stuff together. And that is the, the most important piece of what 
I feel like we're building and what we're doing at Singly is we want to let apps, we want to help apps do this. We want to create this fabric between everything. So a piece of this, um, this so there's a book uh, that Dehock wrote that everybody should read. It's, it's not a very well-known book, but it's incredible about the story of Visa and the sort of the structure of, of Visa itself. It's something you'd, you'd be very surprised about. He has a lot of great quotes in there, but this one is, is really salient to us at Singly and to the story that I've told so far. This definition of life is what a small town, rural Iowa community is. This is what happens in a very rich, very deep, and very powerful way uh, that I grew up with and that I love being a part of, is that people have the shared context of the community. They know the other people. They know the events that are happening. Um, so they're able to share all of this information in a very powerful way. Uh, sometimes the transform and transmit becomes gossip in a small town, um, but it's, it's such a... It's such a definition of life that goes beyond an individual and beyond a family into a whole small community. This is exactly what technology is enabling us to do across a much larger, much wider audience. We don't, we're not from the same small town, but yet we can actually start to have that same small town experience through all of these apps. And the more rich and the more powerful those applications become, the more that community value can become a part of our everyday life. So I'm going through this kind of fast. Um, the, back, back to Singly, uh, we're, all of these applications, the, that's, the most exciting thing is that applications that are trying to become a part of the fabric of our life, we can make a difference for them overnight. It's, all of our stuff is open source. Uh, we, we host a lot of it. The business model is simple hosting of all of this infrastructure. But what we really want to do is let everybody who's creating applications and even using applications be able to bring their life into the application to have a great experience and to create new things and to be able to share them out. That fabric is what's connecting the world closer and tighter. And there's a lot of things that are trying to pull the world into clumps and away from this. And this fabric is what's letting us be humans with each other and create this, take this small town, small community um, value that I grew up with, applied to technology, and become a communication platform for the whole world. Uh, and there, there's something I wrote down. Uh, I, wanna, I wanted to read it really quick. Um, it, it's, that it sort of culminates this is that I was, I believe that I was most valuable future export to the world is its entrepreneurial community values. I've realized in building Singly that uh, only in the last couple months is that as an entrepreneur, for the first time in the founder's seat, I can look back at what my dad struggled with on the farm and realize he was an entrepreneur, that the farmers here in Iowa are really, they, they have that entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, a lot of them are adopting technology as fast as they can, but the same struggles they go through, the same fact that they have to fix problems every day, and there's big ups and big downs, and they have to solve, they have to be everything, they have to wear every hat. That is what a startup life is. It's, we're surrounded by it here in Iowa, and there's so much more we can do to embrace that and share that with the world through technology. So I went through this kind of fast, which is probably good because people are hungry, uh, but that, that was the essence of my life, my story, and uh, what I'm so excited about in the future, what I wanted to share with you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Fantastic. If you guys have any questions, please line up behind these microphones right yeah. here. We have time for a few questions before we get into lunch. The question I have for you is, you know, being from this, this region here, and we talked a bit about this yesterday, and you may have talked about it a little bit, but have you found many, I guess, the advantages, any barriers to entry, the advantages of you being from Iowa, working at Iowa, et cetera? The advantages, absolutely. Uh, traveling to New York and San Francisco, they have a very different perception of what real life is. <laughs> um, it's, San Francisco, you know, there's, it's almost all iPhones, right? It's very few Android phones. I come home to Iowa, my whole family is all iPhones, of course, but almost everybody else in the community has Android phones. 
And it's, it's such a, a, a huge difference in what, you know, the people building the technology think that the world is like versus what you sit down in a small town and you listen to what people care about and talk about. Um, yes, Facebook is there, Instagram is there, Foursquare is even getting, you know, into the rural communities to some degree. Um, but the adoption is much slower and the things that people care and talk about is much different. So it's, it's wonderful to be able to bring that experience and, and it's also, it's jarring at times too. <laughs> to be able to go back and forth. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say major nerd cred. As an entrepreneur and a developer in Iowa, I, I had no idea that the creator of Jabber was here, and that's awesome. <laughs> and my question to you uh, is, can you compare and contra contrast a little bit what Singly's doing with um, Facebook's Open Graph? Uh, so, Facebook's Open Graph is, is actually is one of the best APIs out there. Uh, it, it's really great to work with. And uh, to go back and like my language example, they have a really good, really powerful set of language elements. And what Singly is trying to do is let every application both bring those language elements and create new ones. Really, it's a framework for applications to be able to participate in the language that's existing across all of these applications like instantly, you can drop it in and start talking all this, all this language and really to be able to create new ones. The whole idea of creating, starting a new app in a new area, in a new vertical, in a new thing, is that you can create some new experience for a person and let them share that to others. Hi. <laughs> I uh, want to second that too. Um, what are some of the other uh, either technologies, frameworks, APIs, or sites that you're excited about personally that are up and coming? Um, so I'm, I'm excited about a lot of the, the apps that are building on us because that's what I see on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, honestly, the, I think the most exciting thing for me is, is, is actually that Android is accelerating and increasing, that people are getting these smartphones even if they don't want to. It's like they don't really have a choice anymore. There's, they're getting these phones that have these apps, that they try these experiences. Um, and that there's more and more of these apps and they have you know, fun elements to them that kids are able to use these devices, that they're, they're touch interfaces. My uh, nine-year-old learned how to read like almost predominantly because he had to read in order to advance his use of the iPhone um, and the iPod Touch early on. So it's, it's really about the advancement of technology overall. Um, the, yeah, it, the, the fact that the phones can grab so much more context about where we are, that they have location, and I think they're gonna get a lot smarter. Um, I have like a body media device and a, and a Fitbit that I use to like track my sleep and my, my health and activity, and I use RunKeeper. That data helps me reflect back and know how well I'm doing and tell me how much better I can be doing. And that can be part of aspects of everybody's life. I also want to say I have an eight-year-old addicted to Minecraft as well, so. Yeah, Minecraft is another example of something I'm really excited about. Uh, it's such a creative thing. Yeah. Uh, I just want to thank you for everything you've done with Jabber and, and Singly too. I actually uh, visited uh, your office out in San Francisco and, um, you know, I, I'd heard about the fact that you're commuting from Cascade to the, you're a founder in Iowa, but your office and everybody is working in San Francisco. So just wonder if you could like talk about that as been advantages to that, disadvantages. I, I can see kind of both sides of the coin. So I'm just curious so, your thoughts. So the disadvantage is the loss of sleep. Um, yeah. But I think that happens anyway in a startup. The, the, the advantage is that I, as a founder, am always putting my family first. Mm -hmm. And I am always putting those values first. And that has become part of sort of our life at Singly that we're not putting like the company or you know, the vision first. We're actually make, bringing our lives into it. And when we're able to do that and make that our core values, everything else is flowing and building on top of that as it should, that we're not at odds with those things. Uh, so that, that has been critical. And the fact that I'm, you know, I can't, that I have to come back to Iowa and be part of this has really cemented that. Uh, so that, that's been a wonderful aspect. But the loss of sleep, um, I. It, last year it was almost every week I was traveling. This year I've gotten it down to just about every other week. Uh, but it's become pretty routine, so it, hasn't, it isn't too bad. Great. Thanks. I was going to ask you about your family balance because you mentioned that at the beginning, but you just answered it. So, and it had been really awkward if I would have just sat down. So instead I'll throw, out, <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw out huge props to you. I work for John Deere, so huge props for calling out the American farmer and their entrepreneur spirit because I think they rock the world.
Just wondering if you'd normally wear shoes. <laughs> so I normally wear sandals, um, but I, I love being barefoot. Um, I love being connected to the ground. I ran around as a kid barefoot on the farm all the time. Um, and it, it's just, it's part of like the sensation of being connected to the ground and to the world is, is, is important to me. Thank you. Thanks everyone.